The Battle of Lilybaeum was the first clash between the navies of Carthage and Rome in 218 BC during the Second Punic War. The Carthaginians had sent 35 quinquerums to raid Sicily, starting with Lilybaeum. The Romans, warned by Yero of Syracuse of the coming raid, had time to intercept the Carthaginian contingent with a fleet of 20 quinquerums and managed to capture several Carthaginian ships. Chapter 1 Background Carthage and the Roman Republic had peaceful, if not friendly, relations since signing the first treaty in 509 BC, which had detailed the rights of each power. Treaties were signed in 348 and 306 BC that further established the spheres of influence of each state. Carthage and Rome cooperated against King Pyrrhus and signed a treaty of cooperation in 279 BC. However, Roman involvement in Messina in Sicily in 264 BC led to the First Punic War, which cost Carthage her Sicilian holdings, naval supremacy and a large indemnity. The Roman actions during the Mercenary War favoured Carthage, but they seized Sardinia and Corsica after that war concluded. Carthage rebuilt her fortunes by conquering parts of Iberia under the leadership of Homilcar, Hosdrubal and Hannibal during 237-218 BC. Rome, at the instigation of Missalia, signed a treaty with Hosdrubal the Fair in 226 BC, which established the Ebro as the limit of Carthaginian power in Iberia. The city of Saguntum, located south of the river, became an ally of Rome some time after 226 BC. When Iberian allies of Hannibal came into conflict with Saguntum, Rome warned Hannibal not to intervene. Faced with the alternative of backing down and losing face, Hannibal opted to attack Saguntum. This was the start of the Second Punic War. Chapter 2 Strategic Situation the Roman Senate had declared war on Carthage after Hannibal had attacked, besieged and finally taken the city of Saguntum in Iberia in 219 BC. Rome had declared Saguntum an ally but had done nothing to help the city during the eight-month-long siege. Once the siege was over, the combatants started to make ready for the coming struggle, which was to last eighteen years. Chapter 2 Section 1 Roman Preparations the Roman navy had been mobilized in 219 BC, fielding 220 quinquerums for fighting the Illyrians. Publius Cornelius Scipio received four legions and was to sail for Iberia escorted by sixty ships. However, Gauls of the Boy and Insubra tribes in northern Italy attacked the Roman colonies of Placentia and Cremona, causing the Romans to flee to Matina, which the Gauls then besieged. Praetor L. Manlius Volso marched from Ariminium with two Roman legions, 600 Roman horse, 10,000 allied infantry and 1,000 allied cavalry towards Cisalpine Gaul. This army was ambushed, twice on the way, losing 1,200 men. Although the siege of Matina was raised, the army itself fell under a loose siege a few miles from Matina. This event prompted the Roman Senate to send one of Scipio's legions and 5,000 allied troops to aid Valso. Scipio had to raise troops to replace these and thus could not set out for Iberia until September 218 BC. Consul Tiberius Sempronius Longus received four legions and instructions to sail for Africa, escorted by 160 quinquerums. Sempronius had set sail for Sicily, where he was to complete his preparations for invading Africa. Chapter 2 Section 2 Punic Preparations Hannibal had dismissed his army to winter quarters after the siege of Saguntum. In the summer of 218 BC, Hannibal stationed 15,000 soldiers and 21 elephants in Iberia under his brother Hosdrubal Barca, and sent 20,000 soldiers in Africa with 4,000 garrisoning Carthage itself. The army that marched for Italy from Cartagena is supposed to have numbered 90,000 foot and 12,000 cavalry, and 37 elephants. Hannibal divided his army into three columns before crossing the Ebro River, and attacked the Iberian tribes of Ilagetes, Burgessii and Orsatani in Catalonia. In a two-month-long campaign, Hannibal subdued parts of Catalonia between the Ebro, the Pyrenees and the Sicaris River in a swift, if costly campaign. 
The Iberian contingent of the Punic navy, which numbered fifty quinquerums and five triremes, remained in Iberian waters, having shadowed Hannibal's army for some way. Carthage mobilized at least fifty-five quinquerums for immediate raids on Italy. Chapter 3, Prelude The Carthaginian navy struck the first blow of the war when a fleet of twenty quinquerums, loaded with one thousand soldiers, raided the Lipari Islands in 218 BC. Another group of eight ships attacked Vulcano Island, but was blown off course in a storm towards the Straits of Messina. The Syracusan navy, then at Messina, managed to capture three of the ships, which surrendered without resistance. Learning from the captured crew that a Carthaginian fleet was to attack Lilibium, Yero II, who was at Messina awaiting the arrival of Sempronius, warned the Roman praetor Marcus Aemilius Lepidus at Lilibium about the impending raid. Chapter 4 The Battle The Carthaginian fleet was hampered by bad weather and had to wait before commencing their operation. Although the Romans only had twenty ships present at Lilibium, the praetor, after receiving the warning from Yero, provisioned his ships for a long sail and put a proper contingent of Roman legionaries on board each ship, before the Carthaginian fleet appeared. He also posted lookouts along the coast, to watch out for the Carthaginian ships, giving him early warning and minimizing the risk of surprise. The Carthaginians had broken their journey at the Agates Islands, and when they sailed for Lilibium on a moonlit night, they intended to make their approach coincide with the dawn. The Roman lookouts, spotted them well before they reached the harbour. As the Romans sallied forth, the Carthaginians lowered their sails for battle and moved to the open sea. The Carthaginians outnumbered the Romans, but their ships were undermanned and the Romans had the advantage of containing a larger number of soldiers aboard their ships. Playing to their individual strengths, the Roman ships tried to close with the Carthaginian ships and grapple them, while the Carthaginians tried to evade the onrushing Roman ships and ram them if possible. In the melee, the Romans managed to board and capture seven Carthaginian ships and take 1,700 prisoners. The remaining Carthaginian ships managed to retreat. The Roman losses are unknown. Chapter 5 Aftermath the Romans had managed to thwart the Carthaginian attempt to establish a base in Sicily. The consul T. Sempronius Longus soon arrived with his army and fleet in Sicily. He sailed with his fleet to Malta, where he captured the island and collected 2,000 prisoners, along with the Carthaginian garrison commander, Homilcar Gisco. He then sailed to intercept a Carthaginian naval contingent raiding the Vulcan Islands. The Carthaginian contingent had sailed and raided the Roman territory around Vibo in Brutium. Sempronius received the news of the Battle of Ticinus and was summoned by the Roman Senate to aid Scipio. He posted fifty ships at Lilibium under Marcus Aemilius, another twenty-five in Vibo, then sent his army via land and sea to Ariminium.